sharing his sharing his uh, journey about scaling it to the bourses and how this startup made it to the IPO stage. So, welcome, Ankit. Welcome. Thanks for having me here. Real pleasure to be around. So, Ankit, uh, I mean, uh, currently in the market, we have seen a lot of uh, startups going public, whether it was Zomato, it was uh, Nika, it was our recent one, Mama Earth. But yes, you operate in a different space altogether, that too in the drone manufacturing space. So, how has the entire journey played out for you? And when was the time when you decided, okay, now I should take the company public? No, thanks, Punita. Um, so our journey actually started way back in the year 2007. So we actually registered the business then, but we actually were building drones while we were still students at IIT Bombay. And uh, we built our first one in 2004. And, uh, you know, I should share the fun fact that it was an early prototype of ours in the movie Three Idiots that you all saw. So. <laughs> We, in a way, pioneered this space in our country and um, over many years, we were essentially <clears throat> building the technology, seeding the technology. So we had to build the market uh, in India for this technology and uh, for the first few years of our journey from 2007 till 2015, uh, I think we raised less than $100,000 in capital. So we literally bootstrapped this company. We had to build this business at a time where uh, we would have to primarily sustain using our own revenues. So it builds a slightly different muscle in you, wherein you have to build something that people are willing to pay adequate amount of value so that you can survive while you're still building the next generation of that technology. So I think, uh, you know, that was a, uh, you know, very uh, tedious time, but it was also uh, a very foundational time for Idea Forge and who we are. Uh, from 2015 onwards till um, 2017, when we raised our first uh, institutional round of investment uh, in our Series A investment, uh, we actually had started to see the seeds of scale in the drone business at that time. And then progressively over the next few years, we saw that uh, this industry was something that was here to stay, but it was not necessarily uh, reaching uh, its adoption phase in that one sense. And our regulations had also seen a journey from being uh, regulations that denied access. So first we were ignored, then we were denied access to the airspace on the private side. And then progressively over the years, we were essentially uh, regulated quite heavily. But uh, come the pandemic, uh, everything changed. And uh, we saw that uh, there was a need for overall reduction in human contact, if anything. And that need essentially uh, translated into opening up of the airspace for drones. You saw so many reports around the pandemic for drones being used in various applications around delivery, around um, whatever and then we had skirmishes on our border and many such global factors and phenomenon that are still continuing at this point in time such as the war that we are seeing all of them have cemented the role of drones in what's happening around us and the fact that they are an inevitable part of our lives and as idea forge we saw that inflection point and as the drone industry we saw that inflection point where the adoption of the technology started so for us at the juncture at which we were last year, before we decided to want to take the plunge into wanting to do an IPO, uh, the choice was very clearly that we had a sustainable, profitable business. We had to essentially plan what we want to be by 2030 and where do we have to play by 2030. And to do that, do we need to make investments today? And if we do, then we need to find a source of adequate capital. And once that was determined, uh, we felt that for public markets, given our profitability, would be a desirable place to uh, gain access to that capital. And that's how uh, over the last year or so, we planned our journey and got listed in, on July 7th this year. 
how much of it was driven by the founder's decision and how much was uh, the push by the investors? So I don't think uh, we had too much of a push by investors because we were, uh, we were in a position where we could have raised private capital as well. However, uh, the main reason why we wanted to raise capital was for our own growth. Since we were a profitable, sustainable business from that point of view, there was no real exit pressure. However, once you decide to take the journey, you do ask any and everybody who wants to uh, liquidate uh, partially and that's what happened in our case, everyone just liquidated partially at that time. So it just ended up happening that uh, we, uh, you know, did a secondary as well. However, it was more of a byproduct of the decision of wanting to go and get listed for our own reasons. Okay. So, what kind of corporate governance practices you started having, of course, uh, from the time you uh, thought about, okay, yes, soon we are going to list in the market? So in terms of corporate governance practices, I believe that as an entrepreneur, every diligence that you go through prepares you for being a better version of uh, yourself. And I think, uh, you know, I, I look at it as being web 1.0 to web 2.0 to 3.0, right? Every stage of the business needs a different kind of governance structure. And that's what we had experienced previously as well. So from a Governance standpoint, it wasn't as much of a challenge. However, for example, if you're still accounting in something like Indian Gap, you may have to move to Indias, which is mandatory. That takes time if you are starting it uh, after you decide that you want to go public. Um, then, for example, in terms of what you can do and cannot do, particularly post-listing, is something which is quite, uh, uh, quite a restricted list. You have to take care of a lot of uh, areas that you should disclose to public first before you disclose in any other forum. So that ends up being something that you have to be conscious of. Luckily for us, we have been serving a customer who has demanded a lot of discretion from us from the very beginning. So it is not something which we find uh, very difficult in that one sense to hold ourselves back from saying everything we feel like. <laughs> so, so, I mean, as an entrepreneur, how is life post IPO? No, I think, uh, uh, you know, post IPO, now that we have uh, adequate capital to execute our plans, I think as a business, we are dead focused on just executing our plans and doing the kind of things we plan to do and we spoke about that we want to do. I think that is something that is uh, well on track in terms of execution. In terms of an entrepreneur, I think, uh, you know, it gives you a lot of, you know, having good access to capital and having a great team always gives you a lot of freedom in terms of how you will operate as a uh, individual, particularly as your role in the company. And I think uh, we are seeing a lot of uh, positives coming out of this process because Hiring has become, in that one sense, easier because people now know you because whatever you were is available in the public domain in that broad sense. So that has become easier. The ability to collaborate with people has become easier. So a lot of those things have seen a positive signs. On a personal note, I think we never did this for a specific uh, personal outcome. So we've, we've basically just sustained what we were uh, right before that, so that's that's where we are. You know, I mean, uh, taking the company public at times is one of the mi milestones for an entrepreneur. So after this, what's next? What's the next milestone you're looking at? No, I think, uh, you know, when we started Idea Forge, we had a vision of uh, to what kind of environment and worldview uh, we want to create, and I think seeing drones getting adopted in daily lives of uh, real people. I think that is one of the most exciting, uh, you know, outcome for us. The pure joy that we enjoy in Idea Forge is when ever a customer comes back and says that because of your drone, I was able to do this, this and this. And I think uh, that's what we live for. We intend to scale that impact to the largest extent possible. We want this technology to be ubiquitous. 
we want to make sure that it is doing meaningful things for people it is improving our safety and productivity to the best extent possible so doing it with different different category and class of platforms is the current joy that we are getting that's our aim and i think scaling our impact is again something that we are very very keen on I'm sure there are many founders in the audience who would actually want to know, okay, uh, from thinking about an idea at uh, the college stage, at the engineering stage, to making it commercial, uh, then making it to the markets, what were the top three uh, advice you would like to give to today's founders? I think, uh, you know, first of all, you know, depending on the times you're in, depending on the sector you're in, uh, times will be difficult and you know it may be a smooth sailing for a period but i think if you are in this journey for long enough uh, you do encounter times which are challenging and at that time the most important thing that gets tested is your belief in the idea is your reason for doing this so i think doing it for reasons where you won't bail uh, at the first sign of difficulty is I think something I believe uh, to be very important uh, if, if this to, is to be a long journey for somebody. The second factor I believe is going to be important is to have a great team along, which is complementary. Because if you don't have a great team, it can be a fairly arduous path to travel alone. And last but not the least, I would say that ultimately as an entrepreneur, we have to remember the objective of doing this not as a research project, uh, but to do, do it as a business. Ultimate aim is to generate profits from the business. So I think an eye on that uh, uh, with the right perspective in mind, I think is ultimately going to be essential. And at every stage, whoever is investing or coming on board is always expecting a return on where they came in from. So that's something that has to be kept in mind while building the business. As the owner of the company, do you still look at how up and down the stock prices are? Every no, I don't. I don't actually. <laughs> the only one day I even see it is when we have a quarterly earning call. Otherwise, I'm just like, we're all actually very, very focused on building what we signed up for. <laughs>